Hi. And we're good. We're recording. We're good. So today, uh, review of 430. It's Landon and Bijou's birthday. So first of all, let's see how many sizes it's got. So you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten. It's got ten sides, right? Ten sides, which makes it a deck of that. Okay, girls, you guys, go, go ahead and go outside. I'll do this. Shh. Okay. Okay. So. Given the regular deck gum below, find the following. So the sum of all interior angles, we're going to use 180 times n minus 2. That's the formula I want to use. Okay, So I'm just going to plug 10 in for there. I'm going to go, that's going to simply be 180 times 10 minus 2. And I'm going to use my calculator. All right, and if I use my calculator, I'm just going to go clear 180 times 10 minus 2. And I get an answer of... 1,000, so if this one's going to be 1,440 degrees, okay? That's for all of them, right? To take and add each angle all the way around. It's going to be a lot, right? In fact, it's so many, it's going to be 1,440 degrees, okay? Now, some of the exterior angles. Well, the exterior angles, we could do it the way Isaac did, which is pretty cool the way he did it, but it's even easier than this. Exterior angles, regardless, are always 360 degrees, Okay, always. Doesn't matter what the figure is, the answer is always just 360, okay? Now, an interior angle. To get an interior, an individual interior angle, I'm going to take my answer from here, my 1,440, and I'm going to divide it up into 10 because there's 10 different angles. So if we divide that by 10, each individual angle will be 1,440 degrees. Okay? Hopefully I'm not going too fast. I'm trying not to, okay? 144 degrees, yes. Okay, sweet. Yeah, what did I say? She said uh, this is base number. Right, okay. Now, an ex uh, individual exterior angle will take this answer of 360 and divide it by 10. Yeah, that's it. Just divide by 10, which is going to be 36 degrees. And those are these angles right out here. That's an exterior angle, okay? Thumbs up? Okay, good. Okay, number two, a polygon, I might have to do this on a separate sheet of paper because I'm not going to have room, has a sum of the interior angles of 900 degrees. What is this polygon? Well, sum of interior, okay? So I have a formula to my notes. So number two, I'll do on this piece of paper here so we can see it. So my formula is the sum is equal to 180 times n minus 2. So it's just the opposite. I know the sum. The sum is the answer of 900. What I don't know is the how many sides it has, which is the n. So I'm going to take this formula, so it's equal to 900, and I'm going to solve for n. Okay, so for me, the easiest way to solve this is to first divide by 180, divide by 180, so I'll go 900, divide by 180, and I get an answer of 5. So I get 5 equals n minus 2 plus 2, plus 2, and I'm going to get 7 equals n, so it's a 7-sided figure. Okay, that's not bad. I get dark on this. I don't know, I think once it starts recording, I think we're stuck. All right, no big deal. 3, let's look at 3. So 3, all right, we've got this parallelogram, looks like this. Um, 4x plus 13. 5x minus 12, uh, 3x minus 8, and 4y plus 7. Okay, a lot of x's and a lot of y's. So where do I start? Well, there's two ways to tackle this, but I'm going to go the easy way. I know these two angles are equal because in a parallelogram, opposite angles are equal. So that's where I'm going to start. Once I get that, I can plug it in. So let's start right there with opposite angles being equal. So I can take my 4x plus 13 and set it equal to my 5x minus 12, okay? And then I'm just gonna solve, right? X is on both sides. I like to get rid of the smallest x. I'm gonna go minus 4x minus 4x gives me a 13 equals a 1x minus 12, plus 12, plus 12, and I get 25 is equal to x. Okay, and I'll slow down for a second, give you a chance to catch up, okay? So that's the value of x. Okay, I've got x. Now, if I want to find y, 
I'm going to have to plug it in. Okay, So I'm going to take my 25 and I'm going to plug it right there. Because then I can set this these two angles equal. Okay, So if I take it there, I'll go 3 times my 25 minus my 8. 75 minus 8 gives me 67. So this angle here is 67. So if this is 67, 4y plus 7 also has to be equal to 67, right? These two angles have to be equal. So, okay, I'll take my 4y plus 7, and it's got to be equal to that angle, which is also 67. Okay, to solve for y, then I'll just minus 7, minus 7. 4y equals 60. Divide by 4, divide by 4. Was that 15, I think? Yeah. Yeah, 15. So y is equal to 15. Okay, so I've got x and I've got y. Not that bad. So again, the trick to this one is get your x first. Figure out what x is. You got to plug it in to be able to get y. So get x first, plug it in, and then you can get your y value. Okay. How am I doing? Slow enough? Okay. Everybody, thumbs up. Okay. Let's look at number four. I'm gonna need some graph paper for four. So give me a second, I'll grab some graph paper. Okay. And you need to borrow some graph paper. I've got a little bit here. We just have to share, okay? Okay. So if you need graph paper, I'll just leave it right here and you can find it and grab some, okay? So let's take a look at number four, okay? All right, I'm going to graph the following. So I'm going to go ahead and my x, y axis down. And I'm going to graph these. I'll go first negative 3, negative 2. There's A. Um, negative 1, 1, B, and 4, 1, there's C. All right. Now, there really are, believe it or not, three possible answers. We only need one. We only need the easiest one. So the easiest one is probably right about here. See right there? It's got to be right about there. There really are three possible answers because there could be one way up here and there could be one way out here. But let's take the easy one. So the easiest one is just think slope. It's parallel. So from A to B, if I go up 3 over 2, from C I can go 3, 2, the other point's got to be, D has to be right right there is D. Yeah, so it's negative 2, negative 2 is uh, positive 2, negative 2, yeah. Okay, that's pretty easy, right? So we just tried to make a parallelogram out of it. So I connect the dots, D's got to be there, okay? This is not going to be a hard test. I think this is going to be pretty easy. Okay, are you ready for 5 or am I going too fast? Okay. Okay, five. So, right off the bat, the most important thing to recognize in five is if it's a rhombus, okay, then that's 90 degrees, okay? All right, that's 90. Now, all the sides are equal, and I, did, I didn't put any numbers in, but let's just hypothetically say this is, say, five. They'd all be five, 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 and five because it's a rhombus, right? I know that in a rhombus, it also bisects the angle. So this is 25 also degrees. And this is 25 degrees and 25 degrees. Because in a rhombus, the diagonals bisect the angles. Okay. Now, I know something about a right triangle. So if I look right here, I've got a right triangle, right? And so I can find this angle right here, angle B, well it's actually A, B, E, angle, the measure of angle A, B, E is equal to 90 minus 25, right, which is 65. Okay, so 25 and 65 make 90, so 65, 65, 65, and 65, all the way around, okay? I might have missed it, but how'd you get the 5 for the sides? I just made it up. You want to make up a number? 2. 
two. Oh. Okay, that'd be two, 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 right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the no. side is? Okay. No, because they're all equal, equal right? Because it's a rhombus. Thumbs up? Yeah, Aiden? Um, with the sides, do you have to show a number? Do you have to just make up a number? No, you don't matter. I'll give you a number tomorrow. Okay. I'll tell you what the number is tomorrow, okay? But it makes sense. Rhombus, they're all equal, right? Okay. Uh, I was just confused because I was like, wait. I forgot, I forgot to write the number in. I, sh I need to go back and write a number in for next year. Okay, so you ready? The top plus the bottom divided by 2 equals the middle, okay? It's a mid-segment. Yes, R2. So with just a question on number 5. So basically, the wrong list, they're all equal. Yes. So basically, you just have to find one answer. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you ready? Watch again. It's a mid-segment. Top plus the bottom, divided by 2 equals the middle. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. So the top is 2x minus 2, plus the bottom, 3x plus 12, all divided by 2 equals the middle. Or, in math language, base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 equals the mid-segment. So it's just the bases, the average of the bases equal the mid-segment. So, all right, let's simplify that. It's going to be a 5x plus 10 divided by 2 equals 15, okay? Just added my x's, and negative 2 and 12 is 10, okay? Now I'm going to multiply by 2, okay? I'm going to get 5x plus 10 equals 30, okay? Minus 10 minus 10, 5x equals 20, I know it kills you. Divide by 5, x is 4. Okay, but that's not the answer yet. Not the answer yet. Put Let's put it in, right? So I'm going to put the 4 right here. So I'll put the 4 right there. So I'll get a 2 times a 4 minus a 2, which is 8 minus 2. So this side is 6. I'll take my 4 and plug it here. I'll go 3 times 4 plus 12, which is 12 plus 12, which is 24. Okay, how's that? Yeah, our tomb? So the step after 5x plus 10 divided by 2 plus 15, did you take the 2 to multiply by 15? I did. I multiplied both the sides by 2. Yes. So if I multiply this side by 2, it cancels it. Multiply this side by 2. Or I just cross multiply. Just much easier to cross multiply. Okay, so R2, when we solve equations, we do the opposite. So the, what's the opposite of divide by 2? And that's all I did. Okay, okay turn the page. This is pretty easy. We're going to have this done before you know it, okay? Okay. So we can work on the Right, well, I've got homework and, yeah, and the card. Okay, so in a kite, very first thing, the most important thing you do tomorrow on this problem is make that 90. Start right there. Make that 90. Don't forget to make it 90 because if it's high, it's 90, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can find each angle. I did sides. I forgot to put the sides in. I'll do that later, okay? So 42, 42, right? 68, 68, right? And again, I'm going to look at two different right triangles. Okay, I'm going to look at two different right triangles. And it gets pretty easy, right? So I agree with what Max said. I'm just going to go 90 minus 68, and that's going to be a 22 degrees. So that's 20. You're you're on the other one. Yeah, 22, 22, right? Yep. And I'm going to go 90 minus 42, which is 48. So I got 48 and 48. Now before I move on, I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to say, what is the measure of angle A? B, C. A, B, C is not 68. It's 68 plus 48. Yeah, A, B, C is so really, plus yep. Yeah, it's going to be that full angle there. It's going to be my 48 plus my 68. Is it 116? It's 116. Yeah, okay, I'm going to believe it. Nice job. Very good. Nice job, Damien. Yeah. <laughs> Just told me because I said okay. first. It's all right. Either one. Well, Thanks, Max. Simple math. Okay. All right, last but not least, number eight. Let's go ahead and prove it. Now, to prove it, we're going to have to show some work, okay? Yeah. 
So I'm going to graph this one, and we're going to prove it. So this one's going to take some work, but we're almost done anyway, so a little bit of work is going to be okay. So first, let's graph it. So I'm going to have negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 is A. Negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 6 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's B. Negative 1, 6. And then 2, negative 1. Okay. Actually, I don't think it looks like an isosceles trapezoid at all. It does. You know what it looks like to me? A kite. It looks like a kite. Oh, Brett. So I don't think it's an isosceles trapezoid at all. I think it's a kite. Okay. So if I take a look at this thing, I'm not going to prove it's an isosceles trapezoid at all. It's just a kite. It's not. It's a kite. You guys agree it's a kite? So let's think about the definition of a kite. It has to have adjacent equal sides. Well, A, B, C, D. Not the slope, but the length. Let's find the length. So two of the lengths are really easy. We just count, okay? So let's find the lengths. So first of all, let's find the length of A, B. Okay, and I'll slow down. So the length of A, B is actually pretty darn easy. We can just count. Does that make sense? We just count it, okay? So the length of it's one, two, three, four. Okay. And the length of BC, we can do that. BC, we can just count it. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, CD. CD is on a diagonal. So to get the length, we're going to have to use Pythagorean's theorem. Okay. But you can do that. That's not a hard problem because we're going to make a right triangle. Okay. Do you see my right triangle? If I want the length of that, I can use my A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay. So, I want the length of CD. It's going to be the square root of, because it's Pythagorean's theorem, okay, because I already took the square root of, let's see, 1, 2, 3 squared plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 squared, right? So, the length of CD is, because I'm just using Pythagorean's theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but I've already square rooted it. So, I have the square root of 9 plus 49. So CD is going to equal the square root of 58. How am I doing? Now, it'd be great if AD had the same length. Am I going too fast? So if I want to find AD, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. So AD, let's see. Make a right triangle out of that. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. Use Pythagorean's theorem here. So I'm going to equals the square root of, let's see what I've got. I've got a 1, 2, 3, 3 squared plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 squared. Same answer, right? Same answer, which is what we wanted. 9 plus 49 equals the square root of 58. So, now I know it's a kite because I've proven it. I can say that AB is congruent to BC because they're both 4, right? So I'm saying these two are equal. They're equal. These are equal because they're both 4. And I can say that CD is congruent to AD because they both have a length of the square root of 58. Oh, whatever the decimal that is, blah, 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 blah. So it must be a kite. So I can say that A B, C, D is a kite. I proved it. Okay, we just did a proof. I proved adjacent sides are equal. It's got to be a kite. Okay, and that's all I have. I do have a homework assignment for you. Thanks for being quiet.